Hello and welcome back. Now you may have noticed that LT Spice, just like any other simulator out there, is very good at simulating ideal voltage and current sources. What I mean by this is if you use a voltage source set at whatever voltage, let's say 5 volts, it will give you any current you want. You want a thousand amps? Sure, you can have it. Now on the other hand, in real life, things don't really work like that. So you may have a 5 volt signal source, but usually it will also have some sort of current limit. So what you find in real life is that any sort of signal source or power supply has both a voltage and a current limit. So what I want to do today is look at where these sort of limitations are coming from, how do you build them into your circuit, but also look at some simple ways of simulating these. So if you're curious about how you can simulate current limited voltage sources as well as voltage limited current sources, then keep watching. So where and why do we see these limitations? I mean, if I want to pass a really large current through this transistor or apply a very large voltage on its terminals, there's nothing really stopping me. Granted, there will be some smoke and maybe a small fire involved, but other than burning my hands, the transistor will do nothing to prevent any sort of damage happening to it. On the other hand, if I take my power supply and set whatever voltage or current on it and then short circuit its output, the power supply will not be affected. We have a voltage and current limit built into this, which can be set of course, and that will prevent any sort of damage from happening to the supply. So more often than not, having limitations in your circuitry is there to protect the circuit from other circuits it's connected to or from the end user. Because if there's any way to break the circuit, the end user will definitely find it. So usually all circuits will have some sort of protection built into them. Maybe it's electronic like with a power supply, maybe it's smoke based like with the transistor. So let's look at how this sort of protection can be built. And for that, let's turn to the simulator. So what I got here is a simple 5 volt supply connected to a load pulse. And if we run this, we see that there's absolutely no limit, the output voltage stays at 5 volts and we get our current rising up to 2 kiloamps, so 2000 amps. So as I said, simulator doesn't care. I could have made this to go up to 2 million amps, no problem. Now the simplest form of current limitation can be achieved by adding a simple resistor in between your signal source and the load. So what I got here is again my 5 volt supply, but I added a 50 ohm resistor in between it and a load. So what I got here is a load going up to 100 milliamps. My supply is still outputting 5 volts, so the supply part was not affected, but by adding the series resistor, the output voltage drops. So we're achieving a current limitation thanks to this series resistor. So no matter what you do, you cannot get more than 100 milliamps through this 50 ohm resistor when you're drawing current to a load. So I can set this load to go up to, I don't know, 1 amp if we want to, but it will never pass 100 milliamps because of this series resistor. Now the problem with doing this of course is that your output voltage will drop depending on what sort of current you're drawing. So you don't really want this sort of limitation. I mean it's very simple but it's not ideal. Now a more complicated way of achieving current limitation looks something like this. So what I got here is my first transistor which would be supplying the signal. So maybe this is your high side driver or something. I still got my series resistor, this could have been much smaller, but what I've added is this second transistor. Basically what this is doing is when the voltage drop on the series resistor exceeds the base emitter polarization voltage, it will open and it will no longer let signal go into the base of the first transistor, rather the signal will be going through this second transistor. So if we look at the output of this sort of stage, we see that the output stays fairly constant and then it suddenly drops. 
So you no longer have the nice linear slope that we saw with only the resistor, but rather we have this sort of shape. So the voltage will stay fairly constant until the voltage drop is 0.6 and then it will suddenly fall down. So here again we see that we have a current limitation. I'm trying to draw 20 milliamps, but the circuit is only letting me draw 13. Now you have far more complicated ways of doing this sort of protection circuitry, but these are the simplest ones and these are quite common. So where do we find them? Well, we can see this sort of protection circuitry in op amps. So what I got here is the data sheet for the LM741, typical classic op amp. And if we go to its schematic, we see this thing. So what I want to draw your attention to is the output stage. And here we actually have both of the circuits we talked about. On the low side, we have a transistor whose emitter current is limited by a series resistor. So the current going through this transistor doesn't really have any other limitation than this 50 ohm resistor. So this is when the op amp is sinking current. On the other hand, when the op amp is sourcing current, we have the other type of circuit. So we have our high side switch transistor Q14. And if the voltage drop on this R9 exceeds 0.6, then Q15 will stop the base of Q14 from being polarized. So basically what we see in the SOP amp is the two simplest ways of protecting the output circuit. So with the SOP amp you can short circuit it, you can put any sort of load on it, it should not break. So we can find protection circuitry in analog circuits. But where else? Turns out we can see this sort of circuitry also in digital electronics. For example, in microcontroller output pins. So what I got here is the data sheet to the Atmega 328P. So this is the controller that you find in the Arduino Uno boards. So you might be familiar with that. And if we scroll through this thing, it's quite a large data sheet. And we get to page 63. We see a block diagram of what's going on with the input output pins. And we can see that to pull the pin high, you have a high side transistor and a series resistor. So is it just a series resistor or is there also some sort of current limitation involved? Well, we have an answer to that. If we go to page 271, we can see how the output voltage varies based on the current that's going through that pin. So we have here the output low voltage and based on what sort of current we're sinking into this pin, we see that the voltage on it will rise in a very linear fashion. So this is highly characteristic to the simple resistor type of circuit. Same thing can be seen if we are sourcing current from it. With rising current, the voltage will drop very straight and very linearly. On the other hand, if we look in the datasheet of a microcontroller from the PIC 16F series, so what I have here is the 16F1503, if we look for the same kind of graphs, so where we see the output voltage based on the output current, we see a different kind of slope. So we see that we have a fairly linear voltage variation with increasing current, so we have the current here negatively, but then it suddenly starts to drop in a very straight fashion. So this is characteristic to what we've seen in the simulation for this sort of current limited output pin. Now, this is all great, but if you want to simulate this sort of circuit, so to have a voltage source that has a current limit, you don't really want to add resistors or transistors or op amps or make a very complicated circuit. You want something very simple if possible. So this is the voltage limited current source that I came up with. Let's see what this is all about. So on top here we got the actual voltage source that we're trying to simulate. Now in this case it's a pulse source but it could be a sine wave or a DC or whatever. And then on the bottom half we have the current limiting part. And I've split this up into two pieces, the sourcing current and the sinking current. So source current is current that goes out of the power supply, sink current is one that is coming back in. And we have the two parameters to set the two current sources and then I've added a couple diodes in parallel with them. And for the diodes I created their own special model. 
so that these diodes behave as ideally as possible. So when they're conducting, there's zero resistance and zero forward voltage. And when they're blocking, their off resistance is as big as possible. So 10 megohms in this case. So let's try it out, try to see how it works. So if I connect my output to a resistor and run this thing, so we're trying to simulate the five volt pulse every one millisecond. And we look on the output, we have a five volt pulse every millisecond. So there's absolutely no sort of limitation going on. And that is because the current never exceeds 500 microamps. So the voltage drop on the current source assembly is negligible, 0.1 microvolt. So that's basically because of the off resistance of the diodes. Now, on the other hand, if we also connect this circuit to a capacitor and we run this thing, we see that we have a completely different output voltage and output voltage shape. So now we end up with a triangle wave that's limited at around 2.8 volts. And the reason why this is happening is if we look at the current going through the source, we have our plus minus three milliamp current limitation that we've set using our extra circuitry. So if we look on the pulse source, we're still getting a five volt pulse. So we didn't affect that. But what we did affect was the voltage drop on the limitation circuit. So if the current going through any of these sources is smaller than the three milliamps, the rest of the current goes into the diode and the voltage drop on the current source is zero. On the other hand, if you try to pull more than the set current, then the voltage drop on the source will increase so that the current is stabilized at the set value. So basically what we got here is a five volt voltage source in series with another voltage source, we can imagine it's a voltage source whose value is negative and the sum of the two ends up with a value that will keep our current from exceeding the set values. And that's how we're getting our two point something volt limit so that we don't exceed the three milliamps of current. Same thing happens when we're sinking current. So when the voltage source is set to zero volts, if you would want to increase the current above three milliamps, the voltage drop on the sink source will increase so that the sum of the two voltages is a positive value. So it's larger than zero. So this is basically how you can implement a current limited voltage source. And a similar idea can be applied to get a voltage limited current source. In this case, I got my current source in the middle, which again is a pulse source. And then my limitation circuitry is on either side of it. So basically what we got here is two voltage sources that set our limitation and again the two ideal diodes. So when the voltage drop on the current source exceeds the value set by the limitations, then current will be flowing through these limitation branches. When the voltage is smaller then the output voltage is whatever voltage is on the current source. So if we run this thing, we can see that we have our plus minus five amps of current that is set by the current source. We get these little nasty spikes, but they're okay. I guess they're because the diodes have a certain capacitance, which no matter how ideal you try to make them, it's still there. And we also see that we have our plus minus 10 volt voltage limit applied. So the voltage on the output will never exceed plus or minus 10 volts. So basically what we ended up here is creating a five volt current source that has a plus minus 10 volt voltage limit. So it's up to you. You can either simulate the protection circuitry, which can be quite large and complex, or you can go with this sort of simplistic model. And that's about it for me for today. So hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.